Last week on September 11th and September 12th, Russia, who holds the BRICS chairmanship in this year, organized a high-level meeting of national security advisors in St. Petersburg. Vladimir Putin addressed the group directly, revealing important details about the development of BRICS and the preparations for the upcoming summit meeting in Kazan. The meeting was held between top-level diplomats of each country, among them Wang Yi, China's foreign minister, and Sergei Shoigu, the secretary of Russia's Security Council, which just shows how top-level and important this was. Before I give some more analysis about what this meeting revealed and what we can expect of, to come out of BRICS in the next couple of months, here is Vladimir Putin's address in the original. Dear colleagues, dear friends, I am pleased to welcome you to St. Petersburg. Thank you for being here in the northern capital of Russia. Let me remind you that it was here in St. Petersburg, in these halls, that the foundation for the creation of BRICS was laid. At that time, the leaders of three countries, India, Russia and China met. We agreed to hold regular high-level meetings, as well as in other areas. Thus, the RIC association was born, Russia, India, China. Later, this developed further. Today, I have the privilege and pleasure of welcoming all participants of the meeting of high representatives of BRICS countries responsible for security issues. I know that yesterday you worked actively and productively discussing current aspects of the development of the global situation as well as issues of global and regional stability. This is already the 14th meeting in this format within the framework of BRICS. This time, delegations from new countries that joined our association as full members on January 1st participated. Moreover, there was a meeting with colleagues from countries that are not yet part of BRICS, but are striving to work more closely with our association. This was an initiative of Russia, and we are glad that it received your support. I would like to note that the meeting of high representatives is an important stage in the preparation for the BRICS summit and BRICS Plus outreach, which will be held on October 22nd to 24 in Kazan, Russia. Taking this opportunity, I ask you to convey to the leaders of your countries that we are expecting them at the summit. It is planned to discuss the prospects for further strengthening the partnership of the BRICS member countries. A package of agreements on various sectors and areas of cooperation will also be approved. As the current chair of BRICS this year, Russia has approached the organization of joint activities within the association with great responsibility. Our chairmanship has a special mission to facilitate the rapid and seamless integration of new member countries into all BRICS mechanisms. Additionally, we could not ignore the growing interest in BRICS from many states. As of today, more than 30 countries, specifically 34 states, have expressed a desire to join our association's activities in one form or another. Therefore, active discussions have begun with BRICS participants about the modality of a new category of partner states, which is to be approved in Kazan. It is also planned to consider a range of possible candidates for obtaining such status. I would like to emphasize that the program of the Russian chairmanship is very substantial and diverse. It includes more than 200 events aimed at promoting partnership in all key areas, politics and security, economy and finance, cultural and humanitarian ties. By now, the chairmanship plan has been completed by more than 70%. About 150 events, meetings and sectoral forums have been held. Most expert and ministerial meetings have taken place. Among them are notable the BRICS parliamentary and interparliamentary forums, meetings of ministers of education, sports, heads of prosecutorial services, chairpersons of supreme courts and higher audit institutions. 
All of them were conducted in a business-like partnership manner. During the Russian chairmanship, a meeting of BRICS foreign ministers was held, as well as an extended session with the participation of countries from the global south and east. This took place in the Russian city of Nizhny Novgorod in June. Another meeting of the foreign ministers of the BRICS countries is scheduled for the end of September in New York, on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly. During the Russian Energy Week in Moscow, from September 26th to 28th, another meeting of the BRICS energy ministers will take place. The Russian chairmanship has initiated new areas of cooperation, including a meeting of transport ministers, heads of geological services, and a BRICS forum on nuclear medicine. On the cultural and humanitarian track, BRICS civil and academic forums, the friendship sports games, as well as thematic festivals and exhibitions in various cities of Russia, have had a significant impact. These days, the 10th International Cultural Forum is taking place in St. Petersburg, during which a meeting of the BRICS culture ministers has already occurred. Of course, the Russian chairmanship pays special attention to issues within your competence, dear friends as high representatives on security matters. We rely on solid experience of cooperation within BRICS in combating threats of terrorism and extremism, illegal arms and drug trafficking, transnational crime and illegal migration. Among the specific results of the joint work of BRICS states, the creation of a special electronic registry for data exchange on computer attacks and incidents can be noted. The agreement on establishing a BRICS Council on Terrorism Financing and Money Laundering is in the final stages of approval. In July, the ninth plenary session of the Working Group on Counter-Terrorism was successfully held in Moscow. As part of the BRICS Group's anti-corruption efforts, at the proposal of the Russian side, Common approaches of the member countries to combating bribery and returning assets and income obtained from illegal activities have been approved. The interaction of BRICS states in combating drug-related crime has received additional impetus. During the latest meeting of the Anti-Drug Working Group in May, agreements were reached on cooperation in preventing the use of information technologies and virtual payment systems in drug trafficking. This is briefly what I wanted to say to start our discussion, hoping for your active response, dear colleagues. I now give the floor to the Secretary of the Security Council of the Russian Federation, Sergei Kuzhugetovich Shoigu. Please. So, what do we learn from this? First of all, I think it's important to stress just how many times BRICS was meeting and how much Russia and Vladimir Putin pushed the agenda to actually have these different states and various levels of representatives come together and discuss common issues. About 150 already and 50 more to come, 200 events in total over the course of one single year, that's a lot. And this is not just a claim by him, I mean this is the official agenda, we can look at this right over here. Um, the BRICS 2024 Russia's chairmanship has its own uh, homepage. Looks to me very much like a WordPress one where you get all of the um, the, the regular information um, with, with uh, greetings by Vladimir Putin again. And, you know, continuous updates on what the Russian chairmanship has been up to and how BRICS has been working. And among others, you find a calendar on which uh, all of these meetings, uh, past and a future are are indicated and what we see is just a huge number of meetings that are still to come and um, every single week October 2024 August to October you know there's a lot of things that are not where the meeting itself has not even been uh, completely planned but uh, um, the dates haven't been planned but things have been put on the agenda and people must be very very busy or um, trying to uh, to coordinate among these 
uh, eight, nine member states of where and when to meet. And if we look at past events, you know, it's just a huge list of past events. It's just absolutely mind boggling. And of course, not all of these events are top uh, ministerial level meetings. Um, this here, uh, this here would be one uh, min a meeting of BRICS minis uh, ministers of tourism that was held uh, 20, uh, 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 June 20 to 2021. So not all of them are, are like that. There's conferences, there's forums, there's uh, working group meetings meetings. But the interesting thing is to compare that with the the other group that works like BRICS, and which is the G7, you know, and the G7 is organized in a similar way. I said that in a different in a different video, but these are not formal org, uh, institutions or not formal organizations with a headquarter and then a, a uh, general secretary and so on. Uh, neither BRICS nor the G7 have general secretaries. They work by appointing one country of the members each year and then that country's foreign ministry um or whoever gets 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 chosen um to to work on that then will be responsible in setting up stuff for the next year so because it's an informal club right and if you look at the g7 we have also with them we've got here somewhere in the italian presidency we've got a calendar of events and that calendar itself already looks much more meager than what what we find otherwise i all i i went through this events here and counted them together and actually when it comes to total meetings that we can find advertised on this homepage, it's um it's for the g7 31 and out of them 23 ministerial meetings and if we look if we contrast that with the 200 events <laughs> that the russians have uh, planned or organized um out of those we've got 38 ministerial meetings so even just on the ministerial meeting side BRICS at the moment is is 30 40 percent ahead of the g7 or in terms of um organizing uh, or organizing discussions in which you then push the envelope very much to um, form to figure out the future form and future cooperation of these states so i think it is no understatement to say that russia has really been pushing uh, the BRICS to to be as much as it can in terms of a organization um, of a discussion club right which then creates policy a harmonization but not integration that's the big difference right with uh, then clubs like another thing to stress is the heterogeneity of BRICS and how we we are learning now from this meeting that the the, the internally BRICS is talking about how to manage the fact that they just are eight nine states at the moment and that they've get, got so much interest from the outside so 34 countries 34 additional countries express their interest to the Russians to join uh, among them Malaysia or Turkey and like you know major players in their in their regions who would like to be members and now this creates a an issue um, which Vladimir Putin also uh, briefly alluded to which is that of course BRICS works on the principle of consensus which is very similar to the way that for instance ASEAN works although ASEAN the Association of Southeast Asian Nations is a more formalized group but the principle is the same you need consensus in order to reach policy decisions and that is inherently more difficult with more members <laughs> so in, in a small groups, when the BRICS still was the BRICS, the five original members, you can get five members on the same page and get them to agree to something. But if we add 34 members to the nine we already have, we would be at around 42 uh, states and getting a consensus from all of them in the future on new issues, that will be a serious challenge. And this is why I believe that we've heard from Vladimir Putin now this very important piece of information that BRICS is thinking about a new membership category. So far, a full member is a full member, period. It takes five steps to become a full member, but once you're a full member, you're recognized as one of the core part. And it seems that the BRICS is thinking about adding a second membership category that would probably will probably um, require less adherence to common BRICS decisions, but on the other hand, um, probably make 
the the make it more difficult for these other members to somehow obstruct the decisions of the now nine um, core members of the uh, of the club um, this must go through their mind because anything else would be unreasonable right um, how do you make sure that while you grow you maintain flexibility and agility because it is already super difficult to coordinate among the members you have and um, let's not forget BRICS unites countries that are not always on the same page it's china and india they have border disputes they have uh disputes in the in the, in the high sea uh russia and china um are currently very good friends but they've been historically going through um ups and lows uh it it, it the the membership was offered to iran and saudi arabia although then saudi arabia didn't didn't take it you know in uh, last year but you know brics tries to include is is a different way of global governance that doesn't require all countries to be best buddies forever but in such an environment what you need to think about is of course uh, how do you maintain the ability to come to make decisions and this is something i would expect out of this meeting in kazan uh, at the end of october to see some ideas some new ideas of how to enlarge the club how to be more inclusive toward countries even nato a nato member like turkey without creating the hazard or the, the possibility that even just one member could block everybody else right let's suppose that the current under the current BRICS model turkey was it was included and then um nato put pressure on turkey in order to veto down certain BRICS decisions well that would be very bad for the BRICS, wouldn't it so this needs to be avoided and this is an in, this is a question of how these how these states want to internally organize and probably there will be some form of a agreement for a membership light um, would be my prediction. One more thing we've learned here is how important the Kazan meeting is for Vladimir Putin. I mean, he stressed <laughs> explicitly that um, he expects all the leaders to show up, including Moody and, and, and Xi Jinping and so on. Um, if one of them actually stayed away, that would be quite a quite a blow to Russian uh, foreign policy and diplomacy. So far, it looks as if though everything is on track, but this is definitely a factor of insecurity for the very near future. And um, we then lastly learned in this talk that the that about the level of detail in, on which these BRICS meetings actually talk about, about uh, counter-terrorism organizations, about harmonization of their uh, systems in order to cooperate on policing efforts. And this is the important thing about BRICS, you know, it's not just that it is a new, a new club for an alternative way of managing global affairs. It, it is a a place where a lot of countries can try to solve common issues on various levels, also on lower ones. Although the meeting that we just saw is of course super important because it was top level officials who report directly to their respective heads of state. And this is the moment when policies are being finalized because details are discussed on lower level Sherpa um, diplomat level uh, working groups. So this is an indicator for the successful um, development of the talks that have been held o um, over the entire year that now we are already, um, we are still six weeks away from Kazan, but we have these top level, I mean, one level of below below summit meetings um, in which final details are, are being discussed. And one more thing, uh, Iran, um, the the there were there were uh, close discussions so i don't know exactly what what they would include but it is it is of course always a opportunity also for one on one meetings which we know happened we know that uh, the uh, Iranian uh, Security Council um, representative met with the uh, met with Vladimir Putin. We know that Wang Yi had a one-on-one -on -one with Vladimir Putin. So these um, events then also mean something for bilateral relations, which they push forward. And the next big um, sub summit event that we can expect will be in uh, New York uh, in uh, end of September uh, on the sidelines of the um, of the UN uh, meetings there and a lot of things developing but it's fair to say that Russia is really pushing BRICS to be 
the best it can.